Yes, we certainly are. And it's a special person's birthday today. Yes, it's her birthday today. Happy birthday, Miss Gracie oh, Neutral. Thank you, babe. I couldn't be think of you anywhere else. And here with you. Yeah. And all of us here. Yes. No, it's been an absolutely blessed trip. I'm so grateful. And I'm so grateful to you as well for like, just making little surprises happen and putting all the streams like that because no one's ever really done that for me before. Oh. So I really appreciate Oh, I love you. That's so I. I love you so <laughs> But yeah, we've been busy little bees. Yeah. I've been tattooing in a hole. Well, in a very kawaii hole. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I a just, hentai hole. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I've just been working for the last eight days and I just. Yeah, you've been out the slogging it out. Yeah. But I'm not the only one who's been out here working. <laughs> yeah. So you've been doing some shows out yeah, here. Yeah, I've done a few gigs. I was um, gutted because I couldn't come because I was working late. But yeah. You need to fill me in on everything that happened. Um, it's been great, honestly. I think the LA comedy scene is really fucking cool. I met some really nice people. Everybody's super supportive. It's very different to London in the sense that um no shade but there's not really an audience like it's pretty much just comics doing it to each other but in London if you go to a night and it's only comics in the audience everybody's sitting there waiting to tell their jokes nobody's trying to even yeah. laugh even yeah. if it's funny it's like yeah I ain't you laughing at like yeah exactly <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet but um here everybody's super supportive and really nice um it's a good little community um, yeah, it's been really fun. I think I might do a gig tonight. I'm going to see, though, because I kind of want to party. Party in the USA. <laughs> Miley weren't wrong, man. She wasn't wrong. She was not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but just to talk about the comedy thing a little bit more, like, I know, obviously, you're very established back in London, even on a <laughs> Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's why I'm being Treat those ones good for it, yeah. Being gross by the nature. Um, but yeah, what's it like coming to a place and it being just like, I guess you're you're just starting off at fresh yeah right? you yeah you basically have to start from the bottom because like obviously my social media presence is starting to build a bit more now but I still you know I don't have like 30 to 50 thousand followers or and like my stuff's not could like going completely viral yet what? um it's, it's going to be yeah. viral <laughs> <laughs> but like I, you know I don't have a big following to be like for people here to know who I am if you get what I mean so it has been like been like been like starting from the bottom but it must be quite nice though being kind of like elusive yeah it's it is nice because I think it like a bit of a pressure yeah. it does and it doesn't because like obviously our accents are thick for these people <laughs> do you know what I mean like because <laughs> like <laughs> even the, the last gig that I did um there was a couple people that came up to me and were like I laughed because your accent is amazing, but I did not have a fucking clue <laughs> what you were on about. And I was like, okay, cool. Um, that just shows how fucking funny you are. Yeah. You don't well, need think, to be understood. The nice thing about being a Brit in the US is they just fucking froth on it, man. They really do. They, they love do it. They love a Brit out here. They do. Yeah. Especially if you're like, I think if you've got like a London twang and not like, I think they like posh people, but I think. Do you think that they can really tell the difference? I guess yeah. Top boy has changed. Them. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Because even a lot of people when I was out with Jenny was like, oh my God, you sound so much like Top Boy. And <laughs> You're I'm like, like, yeah, because that's where I'm from. Yeah, and I'm like, Top yeah, of course based on me. Yeah, get your tits out, bitch, still. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, but the people here are so nice. Yeah, everybody's so We're nice. We're used to like a very harsh London green tea yeah <laughs> if you can call it that Bob, no one don't want to give you nothing in london like you can prize directions Look, out of my cold dead hands piss on you if you're on fire. literally and like but here it's like everybody's so happy to help and like if you like because i've never been here before like so many people are like oh we're gonna take you to see this and we're gonna take you to do that and blah 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 and they actually do and, yeah but like for me like if if you ain't been to London before, more for you. Like all the transport links are there. There's a tube map. Yeah, figure it out. Good, good luck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going above and beyond for no one. I send them on their merry way. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Grace's catchphrase. Um, oh, they love that. Yeah, I said they that do. Once, yeah, they, everyone's like, yeah. they send you where? Yeah, <laughs> I send them on his merry way. <laughs> They're like, who's Mary? <laughs> I fucking love it. No, but everybody's like, it's nice to feel special. It is nice to feel special because I'm not gonna lie. Like, let's see in the next few years. But there's definitely, if I can find a little green card, daddy, green card, daddy, if you're watching. 
I'm on the market. Do you know what? I think because of Brexit, I don't think it's that even hard for you to get a visa or working visa here. Well, you know they have a, a green card lottery here. So you can enter a lottery and win a green card. We should enter that. Yeah, literally. We, we they just give it they give out quite a few, I've heard. Really? Yeah, but I mean, like, every man and their mum and their cunt are fucking probably... <laughs> and they're in, like, every other lot. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, apparently you can just win a green card, which for me, I mean, I think that just, like, sums the US up in a nutshell. Because you can buy or win anything here. Yeah. Like, it's actually crazy. I think, like, it is proper bandit Everything, country. Everything's so accessible. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, even, like, right now, we can get, like, Uber Eats can deliver us a coffee a dildo and a platter of cabbage. Yeah, and then you can call up and get a brass, a male brass, if you want one. A male brass! <laughs> a gigolo. Yeah. 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 yeah, I've just been calling a male brass as my whole life. Yeah, this, oh my God, that dumb me over the other day when you were talking about a male brass. But well, yeah, I think the gigolo thing just makes me think of like Deuce Bigelow, no gigolo. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that absolute makes me think of that. corker of a movie. Such a good movie Rob yeah. Schneider, what a weirdo! <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. Speaking of weirdos, though, we went and hung out in Venice for the day, didn't we? Yeah, we saw some pretty fun characters around there. Yeah, for like, sure. Like there was... Dirty hand man trying to hide. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, like literally, this is on arrival. We have been here not even twelve hours. We're like walking to Venice. And um, cheers, bad. We're walking to Venice, and then like I think it was even the first crackhead I saw. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm pretty you sure. didn't even hit the strip. Yeah, yet. literally, we, we weren't even toes. fucking downtown. Like, we're nowhere near Skid Row. It's like literally the first crackhead I've seen. He like walked past. He said something I can't remember, and he was smiling with his no teeth. And then he went to go and try and do a high five. And I was thinking, <laughs> no sir, hell no, no, because like American crackheads are a bit different. I love a London crackhead, but it's, it's better the devil you know, isn't it? Exactly, and it's because like, people you've been around the London crackheads, you know how to deal with them. You know yeah, to to them. well, they're quite harmless. I feel like here because there's so much shit in their drugs. Like, people are a lot more loose cannons that they could do something scary. Yeah, mm. for sure. Like, I feel it's it's a hard one here because it's so beautiful. And I guess it's like London, but it's not as extreme in London because we don't have that, like, concentrated area. Yeah. Here in downtown. Mm, mm. And also the whole, like, fentanyl thing. Yeah. Like, well, makes everything even more intense. Like, like you were saying, the, the, the crackers that you see on the street, like, they're not just... They're not just on crack, like They're in London, bitch, you're, you know, yeah. Like, on... I saw a guy the other day and it reminded me of when Spice was a big thing mm, in London. You mm. know, when everyone was just fucking yeah, cracked out. Yeah, tweaking out, yeah. Tweaking out, doing some mad body convulsions. Yeah. Weird well, movies. that's because I'm, like, apparently the fent is what makes them go all oh, like that. Yeah. And because the thing is, like, in London, if you see a crackhead, man's just on crack. Do you know what I mean? Regular, regular, smuggler crack. There's no, no bells and whistles. You're either on crack or you're on smack. Here, people are on flucker, meth, fentanyl, trang. What is flucker? Flucker is that um, thing that they, they, I think they do it a lot in Florida. I don't even know if it's still a thing, but that's, you know, the guy that ate the guy's face. Oh. He was on flucker. Oh, okay. I think it's like some some research that chemical thing. Stuff. I think it is, but I, I think it's more well. like um akin to like meth or something. Okay, mm. but yeah, one of these just like when they like just tweak the recipe so it's legal. Yeah, like change one little molecule and then it's like okay, that molecule makes the guy eat mm. someone's face. Like it's fucking devastating though, bro. Like, yeah, it is actually crazy because even like obviously I've been getting on it since I've been here and like everybody's like you know in London if you just get a bag like the most it's gonna be cut with is like speed whereas a lot of people here will carry like fentanyl tester Test things kids, yeah, yeah to make sure there's no fent in it and i'm like right imagine that you're just trying to do your thing and get a little bag in and then that's your last fucking bag right but you found the twilight yeah you know, <laughs> shimmering <powder>. yeah. <laughs> yeah it is shiny here it is proper shine also you can get strawberry and coconut and pineapple flavored coke here that's mad. Literally, it's fucking crazy, man. Getting books with the ne- the Nesquik powder. Literally, <laughs> it it had something in it, but it did just taste like cow pole. But to be fair, I used to back off cow pole when I was a kid. I'd <laughs> always be like, "Mom, I feel yeah, <laughs> Mom, I don't really feel really well." <laughs> Nitty from day, man. Literally. Oh, that's the one thing, like, because I don't take party drugs anymore, just because I can't handle it. But like, 
that's the one thing I. It's like I'm glad I didn't have to worry about that. Yeah, Don't yeah. Don't get me wrong. Back in the day, we got a few smacky ecstasy pills. <laughs> we may have gone blind. For yeah, hours. yeah, yeah. But like that was the worst. Yeah, time. you're but not gonna just, just die. Yeah, like that from was just so scary. And because I think like most of the people that are like doling out the friend like don't know the amounts because it doesn't like you do it's a like it microgram like a pin, yeah, like a pin drop with, yeah with to be exactly out. like two little granules or something so it's it, like just i feel like in the u.s the stakes are a lot higher just generally with everything mm. like in in the uk i don't know it feels a lot more controlled which in a way is kind of nice because you kind of know what you're getting yeah but like in the u.s because it's also like because <laughs> also that guy who called <laughs> who called me a fat stupid white whore oh my god we haven't even fucking started talking about the dating scene here crazy and you are trying out an app fucking hell bruv like yeah we were just saying that everyone here has been so nice and hospitable but when it comes to fucking men trying to find a man out here men are really crazy. crazy yeah really crazy because like even if we if we was in london you were on a date and for like two days bruv yeah and not even happened. it was not even 24 hours <laughs> i just wanted to like scope out the scene mainly even just to like meet some people do you know what i mean like not even trying to be like find love or whatever just like you know maybe get shown around or whatever the case may be and yeah like literally some guy like he was going rago from jump anyway so i was like okay i don't think this is gonna work and yeah he called me a fat stupid white whore and if that was london i would have given man a tongue licking in it yeah. like not in a good way but i would have fucking i would have <laughs> rinsed him, him for filth but in america it's like i ain't trying to get fucking shot up here it's just very and the way it's just like because when you sent me the screenshots of the conversation, because I was doing, I was I flitted through them and I flitted over the, like, yeah. the whole fat white bitch whore. <laughs> yeah, whore, 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 yeah, whore. You were whore. Yeah, whore. <laughs> you were dirty whore. <laughs> yeah. Um, but just the whole like first bit of the conversation, it was just like red, yeah, red, or red, like, yeah. I was just thinking, my girl's trying to flirt with me. Yeah, and then, yeah. And like, why are you not answering my question? Yeah, yeah. I like my women submissive. Yeah, when I uh, when I ask them a question, I expect them to answer. And this for me, obviously, I'm a dom in the streets yeah. and a sub in the sheets, isn't it? Like, I, I'm I'm happy to be somebody's little sub. Did you know what I mean? Call me a foot long because <laughs> <A> like foot long <laughs> sub, but. <laughs> <laughs> but like I so much <laughs> submission has to be earned though you don't just get it yeah, random men on course. the internet like I'm not just like yes okay daddy let's go like no you need to earn that shit that's, because that's how you get yourself into some dangerous situation yeah that's not how it works and like even just going out and chatting to guys in bars and stuff like that I'm like yeah, I, don't... I feel like a real man who knows how to be dominant in a safe respectful way and still make you feel as submissive as you desire knows how to approach especially on a dating app if you're just linking up and that's something you're going to do like there has to be communication there right and there has to be like consent obviously yeah but he has to know how to fucking lead the conversation exactly. in a safe way to make you feel comfortable yeah to get you into subby yeah if you're just gonna like instantly get rude and then that call- just shows me you're a fucking serial killer. yeah yeah exactly because that's the thing because like obviously i think the guy wasn't too far away from where we was the- so i was like no, no. let me just block i'm not even gonna say nothing let me just block because i'm not trying to get caught. Ooh. it's a bit fiery up in this bitch Ooh, oh sorry that went on the forest fires. um but yeah, so that's that was my experience and that is the last time I will experience. <laughs> Cause even when I was out with the girls, they was all telling me like men in LA are fucking trash. And I was like, it cannot be worse than the UK. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it cannot be worse than London. And it actually turns out it is. Wow. Yeah. Cause... I'm gonna go home and be like, boys, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, take it all back. Yeah, take it all back. <laughs> Won't you have me back? <laughs> no, have me back, babe. Please, don't be Because I think in London, like, the most you'll get is somebody being like, your butters anyway. Yeah. You're like, ah, whatever. Yeah. Like, I didn't even let you the Yeah, thing. yeah, your boobs ting anyway. <laughs> but like, in, in the US, because like, even the fact that, yeah, fat you got stupid. vicious real quick. Yeah, I was like, right, you went from zero to a hundred. And because it's the way he was like, if you don't want me 
me to contact you, I'll stop. And I was like, yes, I would like that. And then he was like, you fat, stupid white whore. I was like, okay, well, clearly it's not cool then. Insult. Yeah, this is it. I think it's like the vibes I've got from people has been a bit more insulty. Um, but I'm sure there's lots of lovely men in LA, you know, I'm not... I'm just not on dating apps. Yeah, and I mean, that's kind of a given everywhere, yeah. really, isn't it? Well, it goes back to our conversation, like, the second podcast we did, and it just, like, dropped me out. Yeah, literally, not about it. So I just end up I shagging my friends. I thoroughly enjoy flicking through the catalogue, you know. Yeah. Friends, like, that was so funny. Yeah, it is. That's mainly why I do it, though. Like, when I go to a new city, I'll just download a little thing, even just, like, just to scope it out. Yeah, See it's... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can see why you do yeah that. like not even really like necessarily trying to meet people because I always bottle it. Whenever I download those things, <laughs> I will like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Same team. Should I tell it? I think you should. Oh, God. <laughs> I think you should because it's a fucking joke story. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I came out of a relationship, a long term relationship. I was with someone for five years, right? And we broke up fucking like four or five years ago. This was a very long time ago. It was like two thousand and probably like seventeen, eighteen. Yeah. Right? I was a different person. Then. A different person. <laughs> so I came out of a relationship and I also, side note, had not had sex for two and a half years. Mm. Right? So I thought, I don't want to go on the dating app. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to do that because it's weird. And I felt, it felt a bit weird and unsafe for me. I just, I wasn't ready. Don't be like, I'll ever be ready. Yeah. Anyway, so I was like, I'm going to get a male brass, <laughs> <laughs> AKA a gigolo. a gigolo. And I was in LA. I was working at Love Letters. I was here with all my LA friends, but I was here alone. And so I was staying in a hotel on my own. And I thought, I'm gonna do it. You know when like the ADHD brain took over? Yeah. Like, I, 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 I'm here. Like, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. I was like, did all my research online, <laughs> little fucking research, and then I found this male escort agency. Yeah, I guess you call it. <laughs> she found a casting couch. Uh, yes. <laughs> so I found I found this thing. Found the agency. Ran them up. Ordered a man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying about the US boy. Crazy. <laughs> Bro. And also, this is off the back of me just filming um, Vice. Yeah. So I've been to like Vegas and I'd seen these like brothels and stuff. And I'm not against sex work. I've heard a friend. Oh, no, work. not at all. Yeah. You know what I mean? Very like, pro sex work. I've had an OnlyFans, so let's not get it twisted. We're yeah. not against sex work at all. So I thought, let me fucking try this. Let me see what the yeah. fuck about. <laughs> So, ordered him. <laughs> Uber eats. Uber eat me out. Ordered, you know, arranged it. He was going to come over to the hotel. We talked about what I wanted to do. And it was very fucking basic. I was not going to fuck a man. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. what she needs. But I thought, let me do what... Let me do what men do. Let me get a massage. Yeah. And a happy ending. Yeah, you yeah. I mean? Something like, just a light lunch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Starter. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, got the, he's going to meet me in my hotel room at like eight or whatever. Come 6.30, bro. <laughs> Reality hit me. I was like, I can't do this. I can't do this. I grabbed my phone. I, like, text the agency. I was like, I'm so sorry. I've just been called, <laughs> just been called into work. I won't be able to make it. I'm going to have to cancel. <laughs> but I learned that day, and I'm glad I did this, right? Because I learned that day that some fantasies are meant it's to just be better. Fantasies. Yeah, it's better just left in the mind sometimes. Because, like... A hundred percent. Like we were saying, once you've, like, opened that door as well, like, the door's <laughs> open, in it? And, like, once you realise it's that custom. easy... Yeah, like, once you realise it's that easy and you could just have someone come over that's just, like, solely for your pleasure... Yeah. It's, like, anytime you, like, like get a little bit of a haunt dog in the night when you're not in with a partner, it's like, oh, fuck it, go on, then like, get Patrick over. Yeah. fucking ordered a pizza at 3.30 Did day. you? Yeah, I was so fucking close, bro. <laughs> I was so close. Everyone fell asleep, snoring next to me, fucking, and I'm thinking, I just want a pizza from 7-Eleven. Ooh. Yeah, I just want like a dot. So a, a 7-Eleven pizza is basically like the American version of a Greg's pizza. Oh, oh, we like, love a Greg's pizza. We, we fucking love a Greg's pizza. Yeah. And all I could think about last night was that. And I was just like... <laughs> you're like, you are so rago, like, 
this girl will just order like three desserts at like five in the morning. She'll just wake up and be like, I need, <laughs> I need something to sweet. <laughs> yeah. I want to get a banana pudding. And... <laughs> that banana pudding was. I've not tried that. one since we've been here. I need to try we'll one. We'll get one today. Yeah. I want to get, I want to try a bit more American y things. And you need like a cobbler, like a peach, yeah. a peach cobbler. Because, yeah. Because I've heard all of this hype about cobblers and I'm like, it's that's like the... someone who does shoes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, <laughs> like, it's, it's like an American crumble. Yeah. It's, it's I like... mean, because I'm not going to lie, I'm not even like a fruity tootie girl like that to even have fruit desserts i'm chocolate all the way i like chocolate, I like fruit and chocolate <sighs> see this is where this is where it's got me fucked up because sometimes i don't mind like a little dark chocolate raspberry kind of vibe yeah like a black forest guy the, mm, even the cherry for me no, cherry. no oh. i don't like I, I like i've only just started drinking cherry coke i don't really like fruity flavored things i like it to taste what it's supposed to taste like I just feel like fruit's got no business being on a dessert. I'm not trying to be healthy. <laughs> no, nah, I'm like, I'm not like chocolate. I'm like, black forest gatto is a yeah. perfect example yeah. of like what I yeah. want in a fucking dessert. But you've got like a dark cherry vibe to you. Yeah. Yeah, like you're a dark cherry girl. I just like chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. Maybe some like, you like ice caramels cream. caramels and salt. I'm not, I'm not really a, that much of a fan of caramel. I will, I will yum it. Just because, I mean, why biscoff? not? Nah, I'm not a Biscoff girly. It's too sweet. Mm. I like Biscoff biscuits with a coffee. Just like if I'm feeling Italiano. But like... <laughs> Is that what the Italians do? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it comes with an espresso, so I'm like sitting there like, oh, I'm not a bit it. But um, <laughs> I, I just like chocky. And I don't like it too sweet as well. I like dark chocolate. I'm quite a bitter person like yeah, that. I like dark chocolate digestion. Yeah, oh. The milk chocolate ones. Don't no, they're whack. Oh, wow. Yeah, dark chocolate digestives with a lovely, strong, sugary cup, cup of tea. tea. Oh, oh you're mate. speaking my language, babe. <laughs> Can you tell we're British? <laughs> yeah, I know we're in LA, but I just want to be in a cafe. Yeah, that. literally. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I do love it here, but yeah, there's a few things just like UK stuff that I'm like, I, I do like it at home as well. Like, I don't get twisted. I would move out of here in in, in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. If the opportunity so arose, but I, I, I think I'm a very like UK I think girl. We would need to do it. Like I think me and you would be quite similar, and probably need to split our time. Yeah, we would. Yeah, a hundred percent. I couldn't be out here a hundred percent of the time. Be at home for the summer and be out here when it's cold. Home. Yeah, because I even like ran into some of my London friends randomly in Venice Beach. Shout out to uh, Marshall Tactics, amazing drum and bass producer and DJ. But even when I was with the London boys, I was like, I, cu- I couldn't give it up. I just love the UK banter. Like, also the music as well in London is so good. Like, such a great underground scene there. We used to the grit in the drive. This right? is it. Well, like my friend um, Danny, she she's Californian and she calls it Great Britain. And I'm like, yeah, that's pretty it's much perfect. bang on. Yeah. yeah. I miss it. Yeah, I miss the edge. Yeah, I miss the grit. And the yeah, like here, edgy is like fentanyl. Yeah, <laughs> which is not cute. No, it's not cute. Which is really sad. Can you imagine? Oh my god, this fentanyl is so cute right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. But just to round off the male brass conversation, <laughs> have you ever done anything like that? No, I've never gone for a male brass. To be honest with you, it's never even crossed my mind. But then when we were speaking about it, I was like, could I? I just, I I don't think, I would feel too awkward. Like even, (laughs) I remember when um, my family took us, me and my sister to Crete, and I was getting a massage. And I felt so awkward. Was it a man? Yeah, it was a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I go and get, like when I go for my massage, like every other week, to, to my body I would never get a man but I just he they just gave me a man but even if it was a woman I just kept on feeling like yeah. I need to let him know that it's really nice so I kept on going like ooh <laughs> mm. <laughs> ooh that's lovely because <laughs> oh, no. I just felt so fucking uncomfortable like because when I was in Thailand it was blessed <laughs> because like those Thai ladies would just beat the shit out of you innit and I'm like okay they'll like brook you up in yeah, all different positions like yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, like elbows like when you and shit it's like good but like th- and because also like side note on that massage 
and my sister got, was getting one at the same time by some woman. And when I come out, I was like, oh, I love that exfoliating stuff that they put on. And she was like, what exfoliating stuff? And it turned out that the guy had really rough forearms. Ew. <laughs> and I was thinking it was some sort of like sugar scrub or something. He's like sanding me down like with his fucking elbows. That is fucking disgusting. Great living with Mr. Ryan. Yeah, that's going to be enough to put you off. Yeah, but I do, I do, I just feel uncomfortable in those kind of like getting a service positions. I think yeah. I just, yeah, I, I couldn't do it, I don't think. I love a massage. Like, I'm not like, <laughs> like a, non, a non-sexual yeah. massage like a good deep tissue yeah Thai massage is my favorite but I think because you like you use your back a lot so I it's like you it. you need it because you need to be put back into alignment like, yeah I need to be moved out yeah. of the, the dough yeah. <laughs> yeah flipped around like a pizza but that massage I had when I got here oh my gosh oh my god fuck's sake I should sue yeah that woman <laughs> broke you up for real like literally Grace was walking like she put my lower back out I had to go to the chiropractor she was... she was like well she she was as intense as I would expect for a Thai massage, yeah. right? But, and I said to her, I like it firm. Yeah. Because I don't, I don't like to feel like I've been beat up. I like to feel like I've been beat up in this kind of, like, orchestrated, rhythmic way. Yeah. But this woman had the erratic energy of a crackhead. <laughs> <laughs> she, and in LA, you never know. She was like... My head is in between her legs and she's squatting over my head and she is like grating on me <laughs> on my back like this. And I was going, <laughs> <laughs> and it hurt so much. And then, you know me, right? Like, I like, I've got, I, feel, I like to think I've got quite a high pain threshold. Oh, yeah, definitely. But also, like, it's like a fucking mind game for me. Yeah. Especially with You like to overcome. Like, I don't yeah. like to submit. No, Especially yeah. Especially, like, if I'm having a really deep massage and it's really painful, if they say, is it too hard? Even if I'm thinking, yeah. yeah I'm always like, like oh, hard on. No, I'm always like, no, it's great. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't, I just can't. I'm like, I don't know, maybe I'm stupid. I think, I, 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 yeah, I think that's, like, such a British thing. You're literally like, <gasps> <gasps> like, is it too hot? No, it's lovely. <laughs> but even with this woman, because it was so erratic and so painful, there were moments I was like, it's too much. Yeah. And she just was like, <laughs> yeah, but what, like, what no, bitch. It's like, you know, 40 year old virgin when he's getting his chest waxed and she's laughing. And it was like, the massage version. Yeah, that, yeah you cocksucking motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that, like, obviously with a Thai massage, you definitely want them to go, like, deep. Because if I do get a massage, I like it to be firm as well, because, like, my back is knotty as hell. I want to get my money to go well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But at the I same time... I doing this to me. No. I need Unless you I get to... a lymphatic drainage. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't need, I don't need a light touch. No, no, I can do that myself. I can give myself a pat on the back nice and right. easy, yeah. I, I, I do like to be needed out, but... I think sometimes <laughs> you need to know what you're doing though. You can't just have a random crackhead with a wig on come into the freaking store and say, yeah, I'm a time masseuse and then just broke up your whole back because like... How did you know she had a wig? It's like you knew she was... It was like you were there. Did she have a wig on? She looked like she did her hair with busted. Oh my gosh. No, I don't want to be mean in it, but she literally put my back out. I yeah. had to go to a chiropractor. I couldn't... Move. No, you were fucked. <laughs> yeah, and because like I initially I thought I was like, it was I'm just... I'm turning a... 35 in two days <laughs> Because yeah. <laughs> initially I just thought that your back was out from the tattooing, but then I put two or two together. I thought, no, she literally murked your back. She murked for me. sure, yeah. She and it's just when you're paying someone for the pleasure of it as well. It's like hell and no. Yeah, because in tipping culture, I felt even more dog. Bro, can we just talk up. about for a second how fucking expensive everything is it here? It is so expensive. Oh my days! The food is so expensive. So and the thing, like, don't get it twisted because you spend more money, but you do get more. Mm-hmm. But I would rather pay half the price and have half the portion. I do not need to have three meals worth of food every time I eat out. Because you don't eat it. This is it, because I have been having, like, leftovers and stuff, and it does come on in handy, like, when you've got the little midnight munchies and that. Because, oh. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Once I've eaten it, pretty much I'm ready to never eat it again. Well, and I think that's, depends like... Depends what it is. <laughs> I need to be... If it's a hyperfixation, oh, yeah. or something else. But I'm also weird. 
I'm like, what's that movie with the uh, with the alien and there's the little girl and she, she's obsessed with fresh glasses of water? I'm like that little girl. I don't know. I don't think I was. <laughs> I'm like, sure that wasn't a fever dream. She's like, this one's got hair in it. Yeah, and she has a fresh one. What movie is that? I can't remember. But it's it's, it's definitely that. about aliens. Mm. But yeah, I I like, uh, I get hyperfixated on things, but my OCD as well, I like new and fresh. And so I like I like little things. I can't have things overwhelm me. Yeah, day. yeah. So I don't know what to do with yeah, yeah. No, you like to have like your hyperfixation will be like a burger or a sandwich or something that's like Oh the sandwich. That was so good. It was that really fucking Yeah, that that one I had that time was just so wet. And wetness is one mm. texture for me that I cannot deal with in my food. Unless I'm eating a soup, my food should not be wet. Especially a sandwich, you know when the bread the bread becomes Why is the sandwich wet? And even the fries as but well. I feel bad because I ordered that sandwich for you because it was my hyperfixation yeah. for the last four days. Yeah. And I thought I'm a good Jenny. Yeah. So I ordered you one. And then whoever made it that day was just not. Yeah, they thought this person <laughs> must love mayonnaise. Yeah. I'm gonna take one for the team and think and take a guess that this person loves mayonnaise. When actually you are wrong, sir. Yeah, I you couldn't, couldn't, you could not be further from the truth. And this thing was drowning in it, and it just it ruined it for me. Now I don't know when I'm gonna be able to eat pesto again. But do you know what? For me, the pesto was my hard fixation for many years, and because also just like in the poor days, it's so easy to just make pesto. And pesto. I cannot eat pesto, to be honest with you. I can't I, eat jar pesto now. Yeah. It reminds me of being a sporter. Yeah, literally. But a fresh pesto, baby. I like a fresh pesto, but even still, like, some people get mad horny for it. Like, I'm not frothing that much, honestly. I have to be, just like anything, I have to be in the mood. Yeah, I if think... I'm in the mood, I'm in the fuck. If mood. someone's with, like, because, um, like, one of my best friends, Tommy, he's Italian, and he makes this really beautiful, you know, like, when wild garlic's in season, because yes. there's, like, all over London. So we went and, like, foraged some, and then he beautiful. made, like, this really beautiful, fresh, like, wild garlic pesto. In that case, I'm down, because also there's no basil in it. I think it's the basil for me. Yeah, it's true. I just think basil is such a mid-herb. I'm no, not going to lie. No, Well, I'm white, so I'm just going to yeah. stick up for basil. <laughs> I'm going to stick up for it. I fucking love basil. Yeah. I eat that shit straight off the plant. I like Lord. Thai basil. Thai basil, thai basil is banging. And I like, th- like, uh, I think it's called, like, pad papau or something. I like Thai basil, like, stir-fry. But I just, personally, I'm like, basil, like, do we really need it? For me, you lot enjoy yourselves. <laughs> Fill your boots. You Caucasians enjoy yeah, yeah. over there. But basil for me, I'm just like, yeah, I mean, like, do your thing. But it's just, I think there's more, there's more pizzazzy herbs, you know, hmm. like a tarragon or like, like a saffron. Like. It depends what you're making though, isn't it? Yeah. I feel like a tarragon's a bit more fashion though. Tarragon is so in right yeah, now. It's so hot right now. You're so LA right now. We're like talking about what herbs it is. Yeah. Tarragon is so in. Honey. Basil is so last year. <laughs> yeah, so, so passe. <laughs> we've got some, um, we've been given some questions. Should yeah. We, should we have a look at them? There's yeah. quite a few. All right. Thank you to everyone who's been sending in their questions. Please do keep sending them in. Um, it's always really fun to like have you guys' input on stuff and like even with like the reels and everything, we always read the comments. We love hearing you guys' feedback and just like um just like what you take from it and stuff like that. And yeah, even if you have a little argument in the comments is quite funny as well. So um, <laughs> <laughs> um Okay, cool. So shall I just start from the top? Why not? Yeah. So Lucky has asked. Do you think AI and tech will ever have an impact on the tattoo world and tattoo culture? Or have you already noticed changes in tattooing that have come around because of AI slash tech? Mm. Yeah, I think it's probably going to impact everything, isn't it? Yeah. As far as, like, designs go, if you can get someone, if you can, like, ask a machine to design you a tattoo, then maybe it will take some of the creative side away from tattooing and people will see it as more of a venture to make money if they can technically tattoo and then they can just rely on AI to design all their shit for them, then, yeah, like, I'm sure people will jump on that. But for me, like, that was just ruining the whole fucking romance in it. So, yeah, it is going to impact it, but I don't think it will enough that... I think people, especially when they want to change their their body for, like, 
a specific reason, you know, and they're not just like out in Falarak again, some fuck like that. <laughs> I think that they, they really crave that, like, human connection yeah. to connect with their vision and be able to execute. Yeah, them. and because it's lovely to, like, be able to collaborate with clients and stuff. I always really like that, even when I'm, like, doing the messages and stuff of, like, you know, picking who who's the right artist for, like, for the job and then, you know, like, even talking them through it and then getting the artist to collaborate. Like, it's a, it's a whole part of the yeah. process. It's almost, like, kind of why you know, you might end up paying a little bit more is because you've got this wonderful artist like there every step of the way with you, you know? Yeah, anything bespoke is always going to cost more. Exactly. Like, than anything, do you yeah. know what I mean? And like, more power to people if they want to use AI, but I think the true, like, the core of tattooing that I cherish will, for me, will never shift and I'll always do what I do and I hope that people will continue to want to come and get well I think that like you're seeing it across the art world that like people's styles are being ripped off by AI because people can just type in like you know a picture in the style of like Michelangelo or whatever just for an example and like because obviously AI gets better the more information it takes in so you know it has access to the whole internet and it's like it is kind of scary that like it does feel a little bit like it might be the um end of originality a little bit but I think as long as people like I think origin- originality has been ending especially in time for a while yeah yeah <laughs> you know what I'm saying yeah. like, I mean, AI is gonna necessarily completely contribute to that but you're right it, yeah it would well I mean good. more just like across even writing yeah 100%. like everything because you can just put something into chat GPT now yeah, write and me just a movie about this exactly in the style of whatever writer you want it to be so Amazing. it's kind of like it's, it is difficult, but I think it's only going to happen as much as we let it happen as well, you know? Like, you need to vote. We we also, it's on us to vote with our pounds. And if you're still voting with your pound to, like, keep artists and creatives in work, exactly. then, you know, that's... Yeah, as long as you put the money into the creative field, yeah. like, there will always be a line. Yeah. You know I mean, and that's really important. And I think something that we just always have to be aware and conscious of. You yeah. Know? Because... It's the creative fields that bring the communities together, you know, like the 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 comics, the musicians, the poets, the painters. Yeah. These are the people. It's that the are, spice of life, you know. Yeah, and they're also the pe- the people that pioneer the political movements in the world. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, we're pioneering the revolutions against like fucking political movements that we can do. Exactly against the freaking ruling elite classes against and stuff. Babylon. Against Babylon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question. Next question. So Star has asked, what do you think about the new Magic Ink stuff that's going on, on social media lately? A part of me is curious about these new revolutionary things, but on the other hand, I'm wondering if maybe Tattoo as tattoo as it's always been is taking a weird turn i ask myself what's the point of getting a tattoo if it's basically invisible all the time i'd be curious to know your take on this magic tattoo by like uv ink is that what they mean i've i'm i have no idea let wait let's look it up this is why we need luke here yeah that that sounds like the uv ink thing but that's been i swear people have been trying to do that for time and i just that uv ink is whatever like People were into it before or not, but I just don't know how safe that stuff is, you know. But I don't know anything about magic ink. What's that? Yeah, it is the UV, UV ink. Yeah, so if you put a UV light on it, then it will then come it up. up. Yeah, that's been around for a minute, but I think they've obviously just come up maybe with some safer. Uh, yeah, it, apparently this one is very mm. safe, but you know, apparently well, it's it's just like I don't know. It is. I think it's like a nice gimmick. And I suppose, like, if you're somebody who doesn't, like, if you've got a certain type of job or something. I can imagine, like, 16-year-old pillhead raver Grace yeah. loving. If that was accessible to me, yeah. I would have been like, oh, my God, yeah, let's do fucking snowflakes all over my face. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. like, when I'm in the rave, I'll be lit up. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you know literally. I mean? So, yeah, like... As long as it's safe, like, why not? Yeah, I think people, like, everybody's entitled to do whatever they want to do, and I don't think something like that is, like, making tattooing that weird, because 
like, I guess there's like a multitude of reasons of why people might not want to have a tattoo that shows all the time. Yeah. But also it's yeah, like... If people want to be discreet, they want to be discreet. Exactly. So I think great. it's pretty fair. Yeah, people might just like the look of it as well. It's like got that kind of like bioluminescent vibe about it. It's yeah. It's like super ethereal and that's probably a lot of the reasons why yeah. someone might be into it. I don't know. But yeah. yeah. whatever. I also, think. I just feel like the thought of like just carrying around the UV light so at any given moment <laughs> hey! you can be like... Hey! Look at this. <laughs> on my head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can fuck someone up easy with that though, innit? Like, yeah. Oh, just do it with no ink. It's, it's, it's magic ink, it's magic ink. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, let's do the next one. <coughs> oh, this one. So, Fish Williams, corker of a question that. Um, you guys have touched on your political slash social leanings, but it sounds like you both have experienced living on the fringes of society in anarcho-socialist styles. And I would love to know more about your beliefs in so- and in how society and governments work. Narco or arco? Anarcho. <laughs> <laughs> but narco, so narco, anarcho. <laughs> um, yeah. I, look, I don't, I think maybe people will listen to, I'm going to talk to myself. Yeah. Talk to you. But for me, like, I don't really pigeonhole myself in any kind of, like, political style. Like, I don't consider myself, like, left right wing or right wing. Like, because I honestly, like, when I look into both, I start to see, like, I'll, I'll find cons and pros or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like, and I'm just, I can't put myself in a box where I'm like, I'm politically this. All I know is that I don't fucking agree with half the shit that comes out of the government and also just from growing up from like this question growing up in like anarchist settings and around people who are very anti-establishment and having those like anti-establishment seeds planted into my head at a very early age I have never trusted the government yeah and because of I'm not going to go into it but like because of certain things that also have like happened to my family and, you know, I watched my dad work really fucking hard his whole life and he got fired and left with nothing. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's like things like that where I just like dropped me out. And I, when I was young, I was like really like hungry and driven to like, you know, fucking burn it all down and try and be part of the revolution. And obviously I still am very much driven like that, but as I've grown, like, like I'm 35 today, right? Like, when I was 15, I still agree with the 15-year-old Grace and the way she thinks. I just don't approach it the same way yeah. now because I just can't. Yeah, so, well, it's just reality sets in, isn't it? In it, yeah. exactly. And I'm also the, the, just the, like, having to fucking live and just wanting to actually make something of myself and giving myself stability in life, do you know what I mean? And it's like, it's like I have taken myself out because tattooing has given me the opportunity to do that as well. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying that I do, but we all have the opportunity to fucking be as involved in society and with the government as we want, or we can take ourselves out. Do you know what I'm saying? So, at the end of the day, like, I've never, I've never really like been in society like that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But now that I'm growing up. And the certain things that I desire and need to secure my own, you know, foundation for the future, security, like, you feel like you have to play, play the game. game. Yeah. I think that I, I would say I'm definitely, like, quite far left-leaning. Um, but again, like, I don't really like to pigeonhole myself because mm-hmm. there's a few different facets of a lot of different like, left-wing ideologies that I agree with. So Everything's so transient as well. Yeah. It changes all the time. So yeah. Like, how can you pull yourself one thing when it's constantly... I mean, I don't live my life by, like, I agree with, like, anarchism mm-hmm. and socialism mm-hmm. and, like, aspects of communism and stuff like that, but I don't live my life like that because it's not feasible for me. Mm-hmm. And because, like, I, I come from a very, very poor background. Like, growing up, we really had nothing. My mum was a single mum with two kids working full-time so you know it's like I'm I'm trying not to live like that and unfortunately if you don't want to participate in the system the system makes it very fucking difficult for you to actually have a, a, a decent life and a lot of these like nomad people and blah 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 come from money 
they they're sorted. Like they they've got stuff to fall back on. Whereas I don't I don't have that, you know. So I like if I want to have a life where I can travel freely and go and experience amazing communities and go and see cool stuff, I need to work very hard for that. And unfortunately, working hard in some capacity is participating with the system obviously yeah, you have to play the capitalism game yeah which is something which is very conflicting to me because i have brought up with my my whole life i was brought up with <coughs> capitalist mindset yeah a hundred percent because that like like grace i squatted for many many years um like the, the people i was squatting with were like occupy london people and you know like ever since i was like 15 i've always you know like done, read loads about like Che Guevara and like loads of like you know Marx and whatever else and like as much as I <clears throat> and because like for a long time I was like I don't want to fucking participate in the system like you say and I was like you know I'm going to do everything in my power to like not be part of it but it did mean that like that came with its own costs like I might not have been paying for things monetary wise but like in terms of like emotional and mental costs you're always paying something if you even if you're not paying rent, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's just like, yeah, I guess and it's and it's they're draining you somehow. Yeah, exactly. And it's really shit to say because I like I do think it is possible to live on the fringes and still have a very fulfilled life. A lot of my friends do so, but I guess their values are a bit different to mine. Um, because I just like, you know, I wanna look after my mum, I wanna look after my family, I wanna look after myself and I wanna be able to like enjoy life while we're fucking here. And unfortunately, you do kind of need money to do that. So yeah. it's kind of, yeah, it and is what it is. what you were put here to do, which is to talk and engage and entertain mm. and crap joke and educate people. Yeah. You need to put, you need to walk in those worlds, isn't it? Exactly. And also, as, as I've grown as well, it's like putting myself just purely within circles of like-minded people or like the fundamentals, being like-minded is okay and it's good but also it's the like, echo I, chamber it's the echo chamber bro yeah. and I got fucking sick of that and I also didn't really enjoy how clicky all the scenes were back in the day and I was just like dropped me out in it and then I found tattooing and that was kind of my new world to just kind of because it, it was great because I could like I could actually make a living and make some money pay my rent mm. and she rent a flat yeah and then also still be part of this like a fringe society that's yeah society mm, yeah. absolutely yeah until it until obviously time and change <laughs> yeah and now we're like in living in this mainstream world yeah um but yeah it's, it's uh it's yeah. an interesting one isn't it it's just like I just deserve everyone has a fucking chance. Yeah, this is it. Like, regardless, like, it's equality above all else. Like, I'm, I believe in equality and intersectionality. And I think, you know, the, the world is not fair at all. It's like the odds are massively stacked against us. But, and, you know, the, the reality of it is like, if you want to live like a, a fulfilling life, unfortunately, you like might have to sacrifice on some of your beliefs at a certain point. Um, which, you know, can be a bit of a head fuck, but I think, like part of me as well like as long as you're not like a nazi <laughs> like well, as long as you're not hurting anyone what you believe is what you believe and i'm not gonna like yeah and i think be you a... have to surround yourself with like obviously when i'm not gonna surround myself with people who are fucking bigots like, yeah and, exactly and no like there's no room there for your mind to open or be open to anyone else's like opinion or yeah you know what i'm saying yeah but look we're all different and we need to celebrate those differences and yeah that, you know? and everybody has a different set of circumstances as well and what's going to work for me is not going to work for you exactly. and you know i'm a massive believer in live and let live exactly and treat people the way you want to be treated yeah that's one thing my mum taught me and that's how i live my life that's my belief for you yeah <laughs> respect yeah because it's, it's just simple isn't it yeah but yeah Burn down the establishment. Yeah. What's the next question? <laughs> so the next question is from Dave Butler. Oh, Davey. Um, how do you deal with the bad impacts of being such a big social media figure? Have you had any trolling experiences? <laughs> Haven't I? <laughs> no, never. <laughs> but I've been perfectly online. perfect all the time. Oh, um, honestly, for me, so like back in the day, I got me Tumblr. And that got a little bit popular. And then Instagram came about. And that got a bit popular. But one thing about Instagram is like, I know that there's a lot of trolling on Instagram and there's a lot of shit. But for some reason, 
the, my, the majority, that the vast majority of people who interact on my page are nice. But reality check for me was when I did the Vice thing. Yeah. Because when I shot the Vice series, Needles and Pins, that was an incredible experience. Yeah, of course. But being put out on their platform on YouTube was a whole different kind of thing. Yeah. So the first, the, the, when I went to South Korea, when that one came out, I stupidly went on the YouTube comments. Oh no. Yeah. Not YouTube. <laughs> YouTube's the fucking YouTube worst. Is the it wild really is. West. But yeah, like some of the shit is absolutely bonkers, what they say. But honestly, like I'm not naive and I was young when I did it because I did the vice thing like, Eight nine years. Ago. Yeah, but like, I wasn't naive. <coughs> I know how I look. Well, you uh, yeah. I know you, how I'm perceived. And you'd also been on the internet for a long time. Been on the that internet, point. but yeah. also I live in London. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I live in a very diverse place where there are everyone. Yeah. So you get everyone's reaction, good and bad. So I'm, I'm. You're not I'm new just, to the game. I'm not new yeah. to the game, but my skin is very thick, and also I learned to don't look like shit I don't look in my comments yeah do you know what I mean unless one of my friends is like you know you should probably look at this yeah the only time I'll look in my comments is when I'll post work of someone else and I will make sure that no one's saying anything ignorant about anyone like do you know what I mean like, yeah there's a lot of body shaming and stuff that goes online definitely and the last thing I want is for one of my beautiful customers to come in get a tattoo leave feeling really confident yeah and, and then, then be someone, taken down by some little yeah, troll yeah someone say something stupid online yeah. and then to see that and it changed their whole perspective so I will cull my comments in yeah. that respect but honestly I don't really get that because everyone on my page is super respectful yeah I, th I think it's very rare that like I, if I go on your post or something it's very rare that I'll see something that's like properly properly toxic to be fair the last trolling thing that I got that kind of like took me by surprise is when we did the the tutorial of Killer Ink yeah um and we put that on Instagram I had loads of people come, not loads of people, but I had a handful of tattooers come for me. Bro. Really? Yeah, like, like, I don't even see that. told me that I shouldn't be, basically, I shouldn't be sharing my knowledge. Yeah. I shouldn't be sharing my knowledge on such a big platform and that I, you know, gatekeeping is a thing that should be kept. Yeah. And that I'm going against, because I'm from the old school. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm going against the old school. So that bummed me the fuck out. Yeah, yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Because, like, you don't really want to, yeah, that's that's a different level. That's not like you look like this. That's like you're basically calling me a sellout. Yeah. Yeah. That annoyed me, Brad. Yeah. Also, I'm not selling out because everyone is going to, if if someone wants to go into learn to tattoo, if Tom, Dick or Harry, Harry at a hoop or whatever, yeah. if they want to learn to tattoo, they're going to learn to tattoo regardless. That we have the internet. Exactly. Like, regardless of who it is, like, the information's already been out there. Get with the time. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And also, I don't think that things, like, because you didn't give away all of your secrets. And even still, if you wanted to, that's your goddamn prerogative. Like, exactly. I don't think that we need to be gatekeeping things and in I 2024. Feel like if you think, if you're confident in yourself as an artist, you shouldn't have to worry about anyone. Yeah. Because you do you, baby. Yeah. Because you're good at what you do. Exactly. And, and no people are still, exactly, do. people are still not going to be able to do what you do. So exactly. why are you worried about what they're doing over here? Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And because I get like, obviously the market is quite saturated, but the market's saturated for literally everything. No matter what it is, it's not just tattooing. Like, Surely that should give you more of a fire in your belly to want to stand out. Exactly. Yeah. But there we go. That's why it is. Next question. I Next love this question. Yeah, man. I like it. Definitely. More oh. questions, please. Oh. <laughs> Right, an hour. Okay. <laughs> All right. Quickly. Okay. Um, Melanie Faye said, I would love to know more about Grace's experiences with body suspension and Jenna. She has does it. I have not. I'm a pussy old. Um, what drew you into the, what drew you into it in the first place and what experience do you personally receive from it that makes you go back to it? Um, well, let's answer the question. Was you ever from Hell no. I'd, I'd, like, even if I told you it was like doing the best in the MA and then you're like, like the high that you, just, that you get is like better than any drug high that mm, I've ever had. Never. 
I wouldn't do it. I am like, honestly, I don't mind a bit of slap and tickle in the bedroom, but <laughs> I, <laughs> I am not one for like actual, like, I don't like, like, I, li- I like getting tattoos. I like this buzz, but I don't like being cut. I don't like feeling like being stabbed. I don't like any of that stuff and being suspended by my skin. Like honestly cannot think of anything worse. I really rate people who do it. And I think it looks fucking amazing when I see people do it, <laughs> but I, I'm, I'd rather just be a voyeur in that one. I yeah, think. No, I think yeah. 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 For me, like I was, a, so I started piercing in Soho when I was 18. Um, and. The girl I've talked about before on the podcast who taught me how to tattoo, she was very into like, um, performance, like that kind of extreme mm. performance art, yeah. body suspension and all this like crazy shit. But body suspension was really like something I wanted to do because it was just so, it just looked so fucking beautiful. It suits me. you as well, I think. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. Like I feel like. Someone said to me, you're either born to suspend me or not. And she said, you were born, you were born to suspend me. Yeah. Like, I've, had I haven't done it like that many times in the grand scheme of things. I've done it like maybe five or six times. That's a lot of times for me personally, <laughs> but yeah. But considering like I've been do like this is like over like yeah. fifteen years. This is your life to work. Like, yeah, but it, it isn't something. It's like oh, I'm gonna do this to get high. Yeah, like, I, don't, I don't want it to just be like that. It was a very like it was a rite of passage for me. It was also a, a, a way for me to. Safely sounds a bit mad. To, it might sound sounds a bit mad to some people. But it was a safe way for me to do something that released a lot of physical trauma for me. Yeah. Um. So it that in itself it was like very therapeutic. The first time I did it, I was suspended by a man, and it, I was suspended from my back. It was in a tattoo shop. It was in a real, like, male-dominated shop full of, like, heavily tattooed dudes, like, doing loads of drugs. Yeah. Like, it was just not a vibe. Yeah. Um, but the saving grace is that I did it with one of my best friends. Okay, yeah. Um, and she was there, so we had each other. And it wasn't, like, a bad experience. But, but it wasn't, like... When I yeah. did the second one with the all-female crew and... I did the suspension from my knees, which is like, so you hang upside down. So they put like a, a hook in your knee here yes. and in your knee here oh. on both legs. And then you kind of hang it upside down with your legs bent. Oh. Um, but that just changed the fucking game. Is it super me. painful? So getting the hooks put in is a bit of a, yeah. you know, but it's just like getting any, yeah. Any old, not yeah. any old piercing. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Get like yeah. your, your nipple pierced or mm. something like that. It kind of like it has that hot, like intense surge yeah. of pain. But the hook throwing is very quick. Yeah. And you know, you have people there, you're in safe space. Yeah. You should it's be. not this just how it yeah. should go down. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like and you have someone there who you trust and that's done, it's quick, it's intense, but then they they hook you up onto the suspension rig, however you're suspending, because you can suspend in so many types of ways. Um so for me, on my, the, my first experience, I had two hooks in my back, like on my shoulder blades. But honestly, when I was hanging, I just couldn't relax. My whole body was just like, Ugh. yeah, I, I could imagine. Relaxed my legs, but my whole t- up in my yeah. body. I, I have pictures of it, and I'm just, I don't look relaxed. And one of the the main guy doing it, he was like the piercer and stuff, and um, he, I, I felt comfortable with him. Um, but then one of the other guys in the shop, he like grabbed the ropes while I was suspended. Oh, fuck off. And something about suspension is like, one, as the person who suspends, I didn't have this in the first experience, but in a safe experience, you fall in love with everyone in the room. Yeah. Because it's a you safe turn, environment. Everybody's holding into you. A baby. Yeah. And. Part of that is trust. The unconditional love and euphoria you feel for the people who facilitate this for you is, like, on another level. Yeah. But I didn't know that the first time, and that wasn't the first experience I'd had. But one thing about it is the the hooks are in you, right, and they're attached to these ropes, and those ropes fall down into someone's hands. Yeah. So whoever is holding those ropes, you have a direct connection. The deep emotional connection, whether you experience it or not, it's like fucking someone. Yeah. It's like, it's honestly, it's like having sex with someone. Yeah. And it's like, it's very intense. 
So this random guy like fucking grabs the. No. And he's like, oh, Grace. And he's like pulling me no, up. No, fuck I off. Like, I fucking went green, bro. I felt so sick. Like I was going to wipe you. And then the guy who was facilitating the whole thing, he took the ropes back and pulled him down. He came over and he was really sweet. He gave me a Santa and he was like, it felt a bit intense when he grabbed the ropes. Yeah. Me. I was like, yeah. And he was like, yeah, sorry about that. And I was like, no, no, that's okay. And he was like, do you want to go back up? I was like, yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. Again, I was that girl, you know, I wanted to fucking prove to myself. Mm. I didn't also want, didn't want to think this room for the men thought I was a pussy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> I mean, yeah. Because I had that chip on my shoulder. When yeah. I was but I think you do, like, as a woman, you know, you're set so much about being a woman is proving yourself yeah. and proving your worth in all cases you know so I did think my first experience after it because I had nothing to compare it to was a great experience but then after that you saw um, that how it actually should be done and yeah. how you should be held and feel safe and yeah, yeah looked after and everything and it was one of the best experiences and yeah I, I loved every minute of it and it really like changed me as a person for the better and I did, it wasn't a suspension, but I did a chest pull. So suspension is when you're completely lifted off the ground. Yeah. Like your feet are off the ground. Really. Yeah. Like there's nothing touching. But a pull may be like, you have hooks in your back and then you can be tied to this, to a tree, for example, and then you can just like pull forward on your body weight, you know, and you can kind of just like hang, but your feet are still on the floor. Yeah. I did that in, um, New Zealand on top of this like kind of hilly mountain by the yeah. beach. Oh, that sounds with, gorgeous. With like a one hook, um, with a one point hook in my chest, we tied it to a tree and I just like lay back and let the whole weight of the hook in the tree take me. And it was, yeah, that was. That was kind of nice because you're in control then of. I really yeah, enjoyed that because yeah. of that. Because it was just me. And yeah. it was like, also, I was connected to a tree and I was hippy dippy doo dah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hippy dippy doo dah. But it's like, you know. Yeah, you, you feel that, that connection. Earthing, and it's like, yeah. earth grounding energy. And because like you've got your feet on the ground as well, it's like yeah. a bit more connected with yeah. everything. Yeah. It is. I think there are many. It's, it's a much more explored thing in Europe. This is like Germany and uh, Croatia and, yeah. and yeah. They're big on it there and there's a lot of crews who are very diverse, lots of men and women and they are safe. And yeah, I think it's one of those situations where it's a very hard community to find. Yeah. But it's one of those things if your heart and your soul goes for it. Kind you of can, like plant medicine and ayahuasca. Yeah. It will come to you. Someone will pop up in your life. Something will happen where you will find a connection to that person and it will just unfold naturally. Yeah. You know? But yeah, fucking love support. Yeah. And um, I think like if you are watching this and you're wanting to seek it out, you know, just obviously always make sure that like in any practice that you're doing with wrist tattooing body mod suspension whatever just do research on the people that you're doing it with and Absolutely. if at any point you feel pressured like that's not a safe situation for you to be in yeah, so yeah if the five don't feel right one percent yeah that you don't have to do it exactly um i think we'll round that off yeah um, we'd, we've still got a couple of questions so we'll, we'll, we'll deal with them, them. The yeah week. we'll save them for the next pod again please like send in any questions or comments or whatever we love hearing from you guys um and yeah we're gonna go and do some birthday celebrations so see you next time guys bye